right now. Well, well the 2.2 million people in Asia, something like that, yeah? Yeah. Well, that would mean that in the last 18 years, 1.1, 1.2 million people were born there. Land that has no houses built there, and they're building houses on what we call Palestinian land. But Palestinian land just means the land that the Palestinians believe should be part of their future country, but they're not actually throwing anyone out of their homes. Now, I'm not saying there haven't been other cases, the case of people being thrown out of their homes. We can talk about those. But that isn't the big picture. The big, the main issue when we're talking about occupation, we're talking about the identity. Now, in that case, it does really matter, was there ever a Palestinian identity? Were the Palestinian, was there Palestinian people who lost their identity, suddenly became Israeli and said, hey, you've taken, we used to be Palestinian, now you've made us Israeli by force. Well, the truth is, there wasn't. There were no Palestinian people, there was no Palestinian identity. I mean, it's, it, there's no more evident than you can see that when Jordan occupied the West Bank, nobody nobody called for a Palestinian state. Nobody called for free Palestine. They were happy because they were under Jordan, different Muslims. It's about Muslim land being under, continuing to be under Muslims. They were happy then because they were Arabs. In the partition plan, it was Jewish state, Arab state. It wasn't Palestinian state. There's no Palestinian identity. They, they are no different linguistically, culturally, racially from all the other Arabs in the area. They're like Syrians, Jordanians. They're all the same. There's no difference. So that the Jews, when Israel declared independence in 48, they hadn't actually stolen anything. It was just that the Arabs couldn't abide by Jews having any part in their ancestral homeland. And that's when they declared war. And they lost. And in the war, some of them lost houses. And some of them, some people were evicted from the houses. Not as many as people tried to claim because many of them left by, um, willingly hoping to come back. But yes, in the context of war, many Arabs lost their homes. Well, show me any other time where there was a war and the victor didn't take any part of the other, of the other country, the other one's country. Germany is smaller now than it was before the first world, Second World War because they lost to their next neighboring, to Poland, to Hungary. That's what happens when you start a war against your neighbor and, and you lose. If, if uh, they would have won, then they wouldn't have been in Israel now. Okay. So you said a number of things. Number one, you said uh, these settlers, in most cases, they come in and they don't, they don't take occupying houses, they take empty land they started. That is false. There is, are you familiar with B'Tselem? It's an Israeli human rights organization based in Israel. It talks about, for example, in a document called uh, State Business, it talks about how Israel incentivizes the, 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 ter uh, the, the settlers to come in and, and occupy Palestinian land. They have built over 150 outposts in the West Bank. I think 50-something 50 percent of them are, are built on privately or fully owned Palestinian land. So the idea that they're not taking on Palestinian land, that is false. There's videos of them demolishing, raising farms, Palestinian farms to create roads for the settlers, to create settlements. For, I mean, right now, let's look at right now. They, they're flattening Gaza and we have people, I mean, we have schemes showing building settlements in, in Gaza. Is that, is that, I did not interrupt you. No, 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 we're talking about occupation, settlements. You specified it to the West Bank. Okay, that's fine. Okay. One at a time. Okay, so the idea that no, this is an isolated incident of settlers coming in and taking Palestinian houses, that is false. That is that is not an, this, it's a systemic thing. You said before, one day before the declaration of independence of, independence of Israel, there were 600,000 Jews. I don't know, may, I honestly have no idea. Six, okay, 600,000 Jews. Now there are 8 million Jews. Did just, I mean, how did they fit all, this, all those people in? Did they just, you, they own 6% of the land. Just six percent of all of Mandate Palestine. How did they multiply so so much? I'm not. I'm sorry. Maybe multiply is a derogatory term. How did they have so many different people of the same ethnic identity or religious identity on on a land that is not stolen? If they only own six percent, how can you fit eight million people on six percent? So the idea that it did, they did not steal land. That is. Okay. Is I didn't ask questions, I made statements and I, and I explained. But you're asking a question mm -hmm. and you're leaving it, you're not allowing me to answer it, but neither are you giving your point of view. So perhaps instead of just leaving open ended questions, give me your what you think happened instead. 
Instead of saying, how did oh, they Yeah, I just told you, they happened? stole. Yeah, they stole the land, yes. What? Privately okay. owned uh, land. land. So yeah, yeah. Are you saying that all of Israel was privately owned by Arabs? No, no, at this point, I'm just refuting the fact that you're, you're even denying some of it happened. I'm saying 650,000 Jews lived in uh, 48. Okay. And now you say they're 8 million. I don't think they're 8 million, but let's say even 7 million, yeah? 30, lot, oh, 7 million, 30 okay. a lot more than there were then, yeah? Yeah. And they all fit on 6% of uh, privately owned land by of Jews? Of course not. So where did the, the rest of the land because come from? The land wasn't, wasn't, it was uninhabited completely. Uninhabited or unowned? Un Both. It was empty. It was What's the evidence? Down. What's the evidence for this? Was Yaffa empty? Was Deir Yassin empty? Uh, <laughs> Yaf, no, Yaffa is, is one single town, and Diria Sin is a town. No, no, no. Really you said it's empty village. land. You said it's empty land. Most of the land, Bnei Brak, for example, now there's a whole uh, Jewish uh, um, Orthodox area, maybe a few hundred thousand, maybe half a million Jews living there. That, that was okay, just now land. just allow, allow me to finish, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yaffa was not empty. Uh, I, I think th there's a website called Palestine Remembered. They have they have actual dates for this. Like they tell you this land was ethnically cleansed 27,000 days ago or whatever. So there are these uh, these numbers. Now, back to my point. You made uh, the first claim is settlers. Uh, most of them don't come in on privately owned. That is false. We've seen we have videos of it. There's literally videos of people being evicted Palestinians being evicted from Jerusalem only to have a settler come in and live in their houses. So there's that. There is so building settlements, raising uh, to the ground. Right now, we have schemes of uh, building settlements in Gaza, for example. If you talk about the West Bank, the West Bank is occupied internationally. It is occupied by, by Israel. Is your, the Israeli Supreme Court declared that Israel is in belligerent occupation of the West Bank. What more do you want? So it is occupied. But they have been building settlements there. They have been stealing land there. They have been demolishing Palestinian homes there. They have committed massacres in 1948. You said some, some Arabs left their homes as, uh, houses willingly. I don't think this is an accurate representation of what happened. Because after the Deir Yassin massacre, uh, according uh, this is a document written by the CIA, they said the only, the, uh, these, uh, the Irgun and the Stern, only needed to, to repeat the name Deir Yassin before people fled. So they didn't leave willingly. They were terrified. That's why they left. They were massacred. That's why they left. Back to your idea of uh, Palestine never being a nation, never being a distinct... Well, the ICJ thinks it's, uh, thinks it's a distinct uh, uh, group. It's a protected group. There's that. Second, your argument that there are Arabs much like any other Arabs is akin to me saying that the Swiss are just Germans. They're just the same thing. No difference. What's the difference? There's no, it's virtually, virtually the same language with an accent. It's the same heritage, the same area, it's the same everything. It's, so why don't we cancel them? Why don't we just have uh, Germany? The Americans and the Canadians are the same thing. Just have America, just have one chunk of mass. No, no, no countries, no identities. The people from New Zealand, the Australians, they're the same. Why the distinctions here? This is the argument. This is what your argument sounds like. No, no, it is the same. <laughs> the Russians and the Ukrainians. No, no, even, even before, even before, like going into depth. But what you're saying is that that some, some, some from the outside should come for whatever reason, just unify, um, just, just unify Germany and Switzerland for whatever reason. No, but no, nobody's no. demanding that. I wasn't making the argument. But, even, even, uh, if, even if they are ethnically and racially the same, culturally the same, Switzerland's been a distinct identity for I don't know how many centuries, and so is Germany. So are the Palestinians centuries. are a distinct identity? But have they been, that's my question, really? Yeah, they are. So in, in 1948, when, when Jordan occupied West Bank, mm -hmm. was there any call at all? For I, I honestly have no idea. I do know there wasn't. Do you have any evidence for this? Yes. Um, the evidence is that, well, for example, the evidence that we... Um, this kind of the lack of evidence for any calls for Palestinian state in, in up, really up to after the, the, the Six Day War, that's the first we ever heard about Palestinian state. That in itself is evidence. But also, if you look at any references, and I can give you actually one, for example, the Tommy Cooper skit, um, not Tommy Cooper, sorry, Tony Hancock, which okay. uh, was a British uh, TV show, black and white comedy. Um, he talks about that, for example, that was in about 1960, in the, in the 1950s, 
talks about the Arab cause, and that there's many more um, paraphernalia that you can find about the Arab cause. People are talking about the displaced people, the refugees, the Arab cause. It wasn't even the Palestinians, it was just the Arab, the Arab cause. Nobody has spoken about Palestinians because their identity hadn't even been created. It was in 1964 that Yasser Arafat with the KGB um, invented or came up, or, or maybe invented the pejorative term, um, maybe, uh, I don't know. Coined? Coined, okay. yes. But it was a new thing that, that didn't exist before. Okay. So, Take for example the West Bank. To say that Israel is occupying Palestine, when Israel took it, they took Jordan. When Israel, when Israel, Israel took the West Bank, okay. they took it from Jordan. It's the only place on earth that has been retroactively occupied. But that somehow when Israel took it from Jordan, now you're saying they're occupying a country that hasn't that wasn't there yet, that never was yet, but suddenly Israel is occupying it. Now, to be clear and to be very totally honest, there is some kind of belligerent occupation in, in West Bank. I'm not going to deny that, but because we've got a few million people who are basically have, haven't been annexed into Israel, so they haven't been given Israeli citizenship, mm -hmm. and yet they, they, they're not autonomous. So there is, these people as a people, yes, they, they, are, they are occupied. I, I will grant you that. It's, it's, it's not the same as most other occupations, but there is some, some kind of military occupation. There's like military occupation. That, that is true. So it, it's not Palestine that's been occupied. It was Jordan that was occupied, and Jordan actually relinquished the land to Israel. They made peace with Israel, and they, they were killed in the keeping that. And by the way, at one point, which you did bring up, the, say, um, the, the army throwing out the people in Sheikh Jarrah, which is not the West Bank, and there's the only famous videos of people being evicted. Now, personally, I don't think they should have been evicted because there should have been some kind of, of uh, conversation. Because I think after a certain amount of years, there's no point, you can't, there should be some kind of, of uh, uh, what's the word, uh, where... You know, recognition, you, you mean? No, not recognition. Um, um, ancient crimes that uh, I, um, <coughs> I can't remember the, the legal term for that but it, I can't, describe it in English that it doesn't have to be it, legal you can't you can't be arrested for, for stealing a pack of cigarettes 20 years ago okay okay it's, right. uh, called, I, I, you know what I mean there's, yeah yeah okay I, I get your I get your point I get your point they may have done something wrong but that was a long time ago the people Sheikh Jarrah were actually is Jewish owned homes that the Jews have the keys so in the same way that the people with the Yaffa still have the keys to their houses. But it was Jews had the keys to their homes and what belonged to Jews bought with cash. And in 1948, when Jordan occupied Sheikh Jarrah and East Jerusalem, they, they kicked out the Jews and they gave those houses to, to Arab Palestinians. Then when Israel took it back in 1967, I think it started already in about 1970, the original Jews, the owners of the houses, petitioned the court to have these, they want the houses back. <laughs> it went through the courts back and forth for a bit, and eventually the court said they could stay there but have to pay rent. They paid the rent, a nominal rent, I think for maybe a year or two, then they stopped, and then the people went back to the courts and went back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, most of the people, the actual inhabitants, the actual owners of the houses, sold their houses to um, corporations, Zionist uh, institutions. I think they're based in America, which is why you have the outrage. It's like it's an American coming here, but it's not. It's actually they bought the houses off the original Jews. And eventually, after many years of back and forth, going through the courts, it was like 30 years through the courts, they evicted the people who were, who were really squatting there. 50 years. Now, as I said, personally, I think after 50 years of squatting, there should have been some kind, maybe give them some kind of money, some kind of compensation. For example, in Israel, I agree that people are kicked out and some people do have uh, claims to homes. I don't think it goes to generation after generation because we can read your grandfather is not alive, but people who do have, well, there's a mall, let's say, built over where it used to be your your field and there's a shopping mall or even a house for someone who's been living there for 50 years you're not going to kick those out Israel has to give monetary compensation land swaps or some kind of monetary compensation and, and by the way this happens in, in a country that's called the uh, eminent, eminent domain something like that okay. where the government had to build a railroad through my house 
they actually have the right to kick me out of my house and give me another house. They have to do that. They're allowed to do that, even though it's my personal property. That's just how government works. So I don't think the people who are living in the house now for 70 years, 75 years, or even 50 years should be kicked out either side. There has to be some kind of uh, compensation instead. <coughs> but and I, I don't know, I have to read the Patel and what you're saying that uh, um, that 50 percent of the settlers, the outposts, are actually on privately owned land. I have no idea. I, yeah, that's right. I'm not. I'm, I didn't expect you to ex find it. Just accept it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to do yeah. It's, I, I uh, look it up. It's uh, state business. That's the name of the document. Okay. Obviously, if that happens, that is wrong. Uh, okay. There's no. Uh, there's no question. You can't, right. you can't steal someone's privately owned land. But most, of it, I would argue that, certainly to my knowledge, a lot of it, well, even at, even your degree, about 50 percent, is just on empty land that Jews can and build settlements there. Now, by the way. Aza is a completely different story. In fact, Aza, or Gaza if you want, uh, would be the, the perfect argument of how Israel, the only way forward is by the way that they're behaving. Israel pulled out in 2005. It was autonomous. It, had their own, it, was, it wasn't fully autonomous in terms that they didn't have their own airport because they're still, they were still a security threat to Israel. But they had billions of dollars in, in aid. They had their, um, um, their own police force. Their Israel is a murder anyway. Go away, idiot. Go away. Ignore him, ignore him. Yes. Continue. It's the only way to move forward. They had not completely yeah. autonomous, but, but... But they had, and, and they elected Hamas, but, and, and after they, and rockets started flying into Israel, but Hamas was elected by the people of Gaza. And Hamas's charter from day one, they were always, they were, goal was, their goal was to, to, to wipe out, to eradicate Israel. Israel will exist just until we manage to eliminate it, or words to that effect. That was their charter, they've seen it. I mean, Okay. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't hidden. Can I respond now? Because, sure, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, a number of things. Uh, it was, you said previously it was referred to as the Arab cause, the Arab cause. Otherwise, I should say that I think, I think it's, it's usually a lot more helpful if we do point by point rather than ten points because I, yeah, I, know, okay. I know I've been speaking a lot. You, you can interrupt me and then. Uh, Otherwise yeah, that, gets, that's the yeah, yeah. that's the point. Okay, yeah, yeah. the first point is, yeah. it was formerly known or widely described as the Arab cause, not the Palestinian cause, and that indicates that they were not an identity; they were Arabs. Yeah. Okay, right now we've heard President Biden, for example, or just Israelis. Forget about you can talk about Israelis. They they say that Amer that, that Israel is a Western country. Yusuf Haddad is an Arab Israeli. He said we're a Western country. We have Western values. Biden referred to them as our people. Is it fair to say, of course, they, they're trying to brand this as a Western cause because it's an attack on democracy, it's an act. Is it fair to say that because people describe Israel as a Western cause, what's happening, then Israel is just part of the West and there's no difference between them? No, of course there's a difference. So you can describe Israel, what's happening, their cause as a Western cause, and Israel can still have a distinct identity, correct? Yeah, sure. Good. Same thing with the Arab cause. You can describe them as Arab. To back that up, not just, I, I get what you're saying, but do you have any kind of evidence where people actually spoke about a Palestinian cause, Palestinian refugees, about a, a, the wish for a Palestinian state before 1967 in the first 20 years of Israel? Is there anything? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as I, I know, there isn't, but maybe I, I don't know everything. Yeah, I, I know. This is uh, what's his name, uh, Mishal Rashid Khalidi, I think, or Mishal Khalidi. He spoke about early on, even when, when, the, when the Balfour Degradation happened, the Palestinian were upset because the British said okay we're gonna give you your land or something to that extent and they were backstabbed they were betrayed the, the British changed their mind that, that's uh, that's what I'm trying to say they have been demanding uh, a state of their own and if, if this is a point that I did not get to address Br British mandate Palestine the British mandate Palestine it was a state it had a functioning government autonomous government somewhat because you still have the British to oversee yeah. and everything they had passports they had airports, they had geographical uh, borders. So yes, it is. They, they had control over the borders. They had sovereignty. So yes, of course it was. Well, it was a colony. It was a British colony, really. It, was, it wasn't an autonomous. So well, it maybe, was because... Yeah, maybe semi-autonomous, maybe local governments happened, but not, still, not as a state. It wasn't sovereign. Still, it wasn't and sovereign. it doesn't have to be a state. The Native Americans didn't have a state. The Aborigines didn't have a state. It's not an argument to say, they didn't have a state, therefore we can 
uh, use their the land that they lived on or anything to that extent. Okay, now back again. You said when uh, or you I don't know if you said it outright, but what I understood is that when uh, Jordan took the the West Bank, no one said we want a state. The Palestinians, you mean? I would like to see some evidence of this because I've heard that same re repeated, like repeated multiple times, but I've never heard of it. Uh, never seen actual evidence. The other thing is the amount of evidence of something not happening. There has to be. Hmm? Well, it's hard to find negative evidence. You can't have evidence of something not happening because it just didn't happen. You, you can say that, no, no. You, you have to find some evidence that someone did. Well, you can you can have evidence states. you can have evidence for negatives, but fine. Yeah. You can say, for example, if you have a quote saying that we don't want a state, we're happy with Jordan occupying us, yeah. something to that extent. Yeah. The second thing, and this is again, this is my personal opinion, because as I said, I have not seen any evidence of this, of them not demanding a state. If they didn't demand a state, why did they have the PLO? If that if it, if being if having a state is not a question, if, if it's not a, if it's not something that they wanted, why did they have the PLO? What? That was to kick out the rest of Israel. What yeah, do you mean? They never, they never accepted, certainly on the beginning, they didn't accept Israel at all. So they wanted to wipe out from the river to the sea. Uh -huh. Now, what the part that was uh, Jordan under Islam, under Muslim countries, and the same as with Gaza, which was under Egypt, Egypt. that was fine. You know, we're, we're happy there. It was the rest of it, from the West Bank to Gaza, from the well, from the river to the sea, that they wanted to completely take over, take back, and completely wipe out Israel. That's what that that was the point of the liberation. They want to deliberate everything. So, in other words, they wanted a state. Take your time. No, it's is it? Can I? I can help you. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, in other words, they wanted a state. It's called the the, the Palestinian Liberation Organ Liberation. They wanted to liberate. So, obviously, they thought that they they believed that they had a claim. They they, they wanted a state, and that's what Yasser Arafat has been struggling for. I don't know how long. The 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 second point is well, what else? Saying that is the Arab state. I mean, it, the truth is, we look back, and even by the way, I forgot to say when you mentioned Diyasin, Diyasin already happened post the, the civil war. Diyasin happened after the civil war broke out in '47, after the, the UN voted for a petition plan. And that's when the, that's when the civil war broke. Yeah, yeah, seen. I think it happened in nineteen in April nineteen forty eight. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. So in, in November forty seven, twenty nine November forty seven, there was the UN vote for the partition plan. Okay. Arab state, Jewish state. Which was non binding, by the way. Yeah, okay, maybe. I, uh, I'm not. I swear, I'll accept. I'm not. Uh, and I'm going to finish in a minute. I'll give you the last word. Oh, okay. No, it's not about yeah. last word. Just... No, because I, I want to be fair. Because I'm going to go away in a minute. So I'm getting, getting I mean, and I mean, as someone who supports Israel, you've made way more concessions than any other person I've, I've spoken to. I've spoken a lot, and I don't. I, I, I want to be fair. In this okay. Um, but in, in, in '47, after the after the UN vote, there was a civil war. There was no war yet because the Britain still occupied it. It was still under Britain. But they were ready that Arab, uh, the Arab, um, um, whatever the groups, the gangs against the, the Jewish gangs, <coughs> there was already a war, a semi war. Uh, okay. A civil war. It was a civil war technically because everyone was still under the mandate. Under the British mandate. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, not tired. Tired. That's not he's like a bus. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, civil war. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so that, uh, well, even that. Even giving a sin, which which I, I, I don't trust him. There were atrocities. Israel was nowhere near as moral as you know, care or, or watching not to kill civilians as, as it's now. In, in the early days, there were the people of post Holocaust, the people of fighting their survival. There was a completely different mindset. Traumatized. There, there were, don't there, want to feel the same. Never again. Yes, okay. Like, I, okay. You rise against us or wipe you out completely. They were completely with that kind of mindset. And Dina Sun and some other. It wasn't the only one. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. Okay. But that was already in context of war. It was a, it was a civil war. It wasn't the, the full fledged war yet. It was post the, the, the UN vote where there was already a civil war. It was in 48 when the Britain, British left and Israel declared war, uh, Israel declared independence, then it could actually be war between states and it wasn't a civil war anymore because up to then it, it was just technically a civil war because it, everything was still British, uh, British mandatory Palestine.
why you can't have a war of two different states when just like you you and I went to war with the Jews and Muslims here, there would be a civil war. <clears throat> it wouldn't be a proper war. Okay. <laughs> Again, you made you made more points, and I was still uh, I wanted to address the Gaza point. Yes, uh, Gaza was uh, somewhat autonomous, yes. and they left, and this is. I think, I think that's the most pertinent now. And even yes. that is not true. Even that is not true. Okay. Israel did leave in two thousand five. They left. the pulled out the uh, the IDF, the settlers, and all that. And the argument that is being made here is that Israel relinquished control over Gaza. They said, here, take it, you do whatever you want with it. The reality is that is even after they pulled out, they still maintained an occupation. They still maintained the occupation of, of Gaza. For example, there is this guy, his name is John Dugard, if you've heard of him. He's, uh, he's, so he, he's an expert in international law and he was one of the UN special reporters. He said, this is an exact quote, this is in 2007, he said, the argument that Israel's occupation of Gaza has come to an end is not supported by law or fact, end quote. And then he cites, he says... Tell me, uh, forget the person who said it, what, in what way did they occupy Gaza? I'm going to continue. Okay, sure, he sure, said, yeah. the test for occupation under international law is not physically being there. It's about effective control. Israel effectively controls Gaza. The Israeli Supreme Court said an occupying power doesn't have to be physically there on the ground or controlling the population or the territory. They merely have to have the potential capability to do so. There is another case, this was I think in the 40s, where they said... I, I, I didn't deny okay. this, that's a problem. You, you, what? You're like trying to make a point, which I, which I myself uh, I, I'm stated straight away. I know that Israel had still, a, okay, they had a, they controlled no, no. the borders. I'm, I'm saying that yeah. Israel maintained its occupation to this day, from 1967 to this day, in Gaza. That is my point. You don't see any difference between 2004 and 2005? No difference? In terms of effective control? Yes. Of course there is difference, but it's not sufficient to say it's no longer occupying Gaza. There is difference. No more settlers, no more IDF roaming around. There is a difference. But that is not, as I said, that is not sufficient. It's cold in here. That is not sufficient. I would argue it is sufficient as a gesture. It was unilateral. Israel, Israel still gave it to people who, who didn't want, who were not ready to make peace with them yet. Yeah? The people of Gaza had not said that, you know what, pull out the settlers, go away, and we'll stop fighting, we'll, we'll make peace. Israel said, you know what, since you've been shouting about the Palestinian settlers, we've shouting about the control, we've shouting at the IDF, we'll pull out, this is yours, do with it. Now, if, if they would have gone in good faith and just built and just focused on building their own people, building their own state, making it into a prosperous nation, by 2010, there would have been peace. There would have been a, a, a proper state. Because if that's, that was always the aim. West Bank Area A, is it a state? No. It's, it's under complete control of the Palestinian state, what, what, Palestinian Authority. <laughs> so why is it not a state? It's just the Palestinians living. They recognized Israel. They, they accepted Israel's right to exist. I don't know what that even means, but they did so. And the Area A in the West Bank is still not a state. Benjamin Netanyahu, and, uh, before the seventh, he held a map of, of Palestine, all of it is Israel. Their intention is not, we want a Palestinian state. That was never an intention. I, I, th I think there are differences. I think there are differences, but I can explain okay. them. I'm, I'm, I, said, I, can't, I can't explain it from this, it's, it just keeps going on and on. Yeah, and I and still haven't addressed Gaza. Gaza. I, say, that's a, I don't stick to Gaza. What do you think Israel's aim or intention was? What do you think would have happened if, if the Palestinians in Gaza really did focus on, on just becoming a prosperous nation and offering a peace branch and saying, you know, let's make peace, we're happy. What do you, what do you think would have happened okay. instead of so, voting in Hamas? A couple of things. The first one is the reasons that I have heard from Ariel Sharon. Do you speak Hebrew? I don't, but uh, because the, the, the conference is in Hebrew. In his conference declaring the disengagement, the reasons that he gave, as far as I know, this might be taken out of context, I, but this is as far as I know, the reasons that he gave were not peace. The reasons he gave were logistical. This is too much, we cannot keep it forever, it's occupation. That's why they pulled out. Okay. Now, as for what do you think uh, the past, or you asked me, do I think the Palestinians uh, should have gone for building it instead of uh, firing rockets? Israel would never allow a Palestinian state, period. 
that is that will never happen never ever Benjamin Netanyahu himself he said I have been blocking the establishment of a Palestinian Netanyahu is not a dictator Netanyahu is not a dictator he's a democratically elected leader that is and there have been leftist leaders many times leftist prime ministers in fact I think the first 15 years 20 years and how many years more of Israel was only left then it was like back and forth left right left right left right the people of Israel the vast majority of people of Israel were always ready and there were the right, there was always the far right, but even the center right were always open to a two state solution if that would actually bring peace. No, no, the problem is there's, so, there's uh, never a partner from the other side. I'll, I'll, no, I'll go, I'll go back to, the, to, the, to your point. I'll go back to your point. As I said, Benjamin Netanyahu, <coughs> Netanyahu has been bragging. He said, I've blocked the establishment of a Palestinian state for the past 30 years, so before Oslo. He's been. He says that he doesn't want it. That's one. So, he's bragging, but he's more, can I finish? I, I don't even know if he said that, but even if he did, he wasn't in power for 30 years. But so we, we know it's just a, someone bragging. I can be bragging wherever I want. Can he influence public opinion, or can he not influence public opinion? 30 years ago. Of course. Not only that. I mean. This is this is my understanding. I don't have, as I said, I don't I don't have a report saying this, but it's my understanding. Because he is, how many times has he been a prime minister of Israel? Yeah. So every single time he's prime minister, he has direct contact with APAC, the the the, the what the the lobby in, in the U.S. Of course. So even a single person can cause so much damage. So he's been he's been admitting it with blocking it. Uh, now back to Gaza. Then the two-state solution. Gaza. The, the the Israelis the Israel would never allow a two state solution. They don't want it. The Likud party platform says clearly this will be Israeli sovereignty, nothing else. The uh, the basic law, uh, 2018 basic law, it says the right of self determination in the historic land historic land of Israel is to the Jewish pe is unique to the Jewish people and the Jewish people only. Yeah, but that's, do with us. that's just that's just Israel. Whatever we decide is whatever, whatever we decide are the borders of Israel. The historic land of Israel. And that is an actual just that's the thing. That's why I say it's different than the West Bank, because the West Bank is Judea and Samaria. Okay. As I isn't. Now so I the, now I ask which, you. Which is the reason why they why you, Israel was even ready in, in two thousand five to give it back. Because it, it never was historic. It, it wasn't. Now I'll, I'll ask you. In fact, they offered it to Egypt as well. When they made peace with Egypt, they offered uh, Aza, and Egypt didn't want to take it. They I don't know. But okay. But I'll, I'll ask you. You brought up a point. You said that law applies to what uh, Israel decides or what we decide Israel is. Yes. What is Israel? Does Israel has have borders? According to Israel, have they defined their borders? Not not according to international law. International law is fine. But according to Israel. I'll be honest. I say be honest because I, I often find when I say I don't know is that people say yeah, that, that, no, 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 it doesn't matter. You don't know. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. I know that some some claim that today and some. I think the I think the position of the government now is that the whole of West Bank is part of Israel. But the other hand, they've never fully annexed it, and they've never given citizenship to the people living there, which is what you would expect if you do annex a land. And, we either expel the people or you give them citizenship. So it might be a bit easier. I don't know. That's fine. I, I think, as far as I understand, that they see that as part of Israel. I, okay. I don't know about that. Okay. Israel doesn't have defined borders for itself. As in, uh, it has internationally recognized borders, yes, but it doesn't have, it has not set borders for itself. No, it doesn't. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's yeah, fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you said. I was going to say something about Gaza. Okay, so yeah, Israel didn't want to allow the Palestinians to have a state. That, that is never an option. So even if the Palestinians had built Gaza in 2005, it would look like the West Bank. Have you seen the West Bank? No, not personally, I'm not allowed oh, to no, go no, 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 you're not allowed to go. Why? Actually, yeah, I am. It's really not allowed to go. Through. Okay, so in the West Bank, you, there you can look it up. There's, there's yeah. images. Palestinians in the West Bank have built nets, like metal nets, because the Israeli settlers throw garbage at them. That's the West Bank. It's daily settler attacks. Not, not area A. I, I think it's one of them. It's That's one of them. Very far, no, no, it's one of them. Uh, set, settler attacks happen every single day. A lot of times, within the presence of the IDF, 
as in the idea for standing by, doing nothing, the Israeli settlers attack the Palestinians and they don't intervene. So that's, that, that's what happens to the Palestinians when they, rec when they recognize Israel, when they said we want peace. Sorry, I've, I've seen these kind of claims, yeah? Okay. And I, I don't know enough, I haven't spent the time enough to, to verify. So I'll accept, even going by your word, that this is what happens. Oh, I, I can give yeah, you... I'll believe you. So, no, no, because... To, make, to, to skip to my, my, my point, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. Even if it, it, I'll, I'll accept your claim, it's, it's been happening only the last few years, five, ten years, become worse and worse. And I'd say that Israel, especially the, the centers in the West Bank, have become ra more radicalized over the years because of the intifadas, because of the terrorist attacks. And when you see your brothers being killed, innocent people just going about their daily business, and not in the context of war, so if you think compared to Gaza now, where there's an actual war, just a person, you know, walking, children walking from school, out of the blue, day in, day out, the intifada, they become more radicalized. <clears throat> okay. And, and, and yes, the West Bank is a different kettle of fish, much bigger now, problem. Now, when it comes to that? But as it wasn't that, there were no we, we can we can talk about Gaza if you want, but let me at this point. Now, I'm not asking you to justify what the settlers are doing. I am just asking you. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just asking you to th to, to to use the same reasons that you gave as a way to understand why the settlers acted this way for the Palestinians. Apply those reasons to why the Intifada happened. Why did it happen? Because of the oppression, because of the detention, because of the torture, because of... So, again, I'm not, I'm not saying this is justified, therefore this. Or I'm, I'm saying if... Because you looked at it as, from an angle of let us understand why they do this. I'm doing the same thing. Let us understand why the Palestinians did this. Yes. As for Gaza, as for Gaza, were they able to live like the, the West Bank? Yes. But was it going to be a state? No, never. It, period, never. When they elected Hamas, Israel declared it a hostile territory. I don't know what that means, but they declared it a hostile territory. 2006, they bombed it. 2008, they attacked it. 2012, they... So when you talk about billions of dollars... Now these were in, in response to rockets being fired, thousands of rockets. Oh, I, I, can, I, can, I can tell you specific events that I'm referring to. In 2006, Hamas conducted a raid. They kidnapped uh, an IDF member. In response, this is again, current B'Tselem, in response, what Israel did is they, they destroyed the only functioning power plant in Gaza. According to, to, to B'Tselem, it wasn't part of any military operation. It's just cold, calculated decision. That's their exact word. And t in 2008, the ground invasion, I'm sure you've heard of the ground invasion, 2008. So, th this is my claim, because you said you're going to accept it. This is my, you can check that if you want. June 19th, 2008, there's a ceasefire agreement. Israel broke the ceasefire agreement. Hamas fired rockets. Israel invaded, uh, invaded Gaza. In that invasion, Israel inflicted enough damage on Gaza in order, f like, in, they inflicted 70 years worth of damage. That means the amount of destruction they, they inflicted would have taken 70 years to rebuild. Yeah. You can look it up. You... No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. It's, it's just the word that doesn't make sense. What do you mean? We don't need to. So maybe one person building by himself. No, 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 no. Because, because remember, in 2007. And to, There's no such thing as 70 years of damage. Can I, can I, can I continue? Was built to 70 years. Can I continue? Yeah. Okay. Because there's a blockade. So the amount of trucks allowed in is dictated by Israel. They said at that pace of how many trucks are getting in, it would take 70 years to rebuild. So even in terms of, we talked about uh, aid, humanitarian aid, billions of dollars. What were they able to do with this? What can they do with it? If, 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 if guns, missiles, <laughs> wait, wait, how wait, all of that? How did they get what? All the weaponry. From strategic allies. And yet they couldn't get food and, and concrete and, and the other stuff. They did get food and concrete so, and so, just not enough because, as, again, there's a blockade and so stuff. And, blockade and for, for the there's another thing. There's another That's thing. The question. Someone managed to buy weapons but not food. Yeah, yeah. Why did they buy weapons? I don't know. Well, when you are oppressed, 
you value freedom more than you value food. When you're oppressed, you value freedom, liberation, being able to live in dignity more than you value those things. My, my argument is that I don't think they were oppressed at the time. They were, they were very, come on. I don't think, I don't think so. And I, and, and I think that conflating and saying the people of Gaza were oppressed because they saw what's happening in the West Bank. I, I think no, 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 no. They were oppressed because Israel oppressed them. They were given a place. And, and they were given a, a concentration camp, not a place. It is. A, it is a concentration. And by the way, I don't know. I've seen statistics that fifty percent of, of Gaza is below eighteen. Is under yeah, 18. yeah, fifty, yeah, something, fifty something. Yeah, yeah. right now. Well, well there are two point two million people in Gaza. Something like that. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two, two, three. Well, that would mean that in the last eighteen years, one point one, one point two million people were born there. Not necessarily, no, not necessarily born, because we have precedence of Palestinians being pushed around territory to territory. So, not many. What, 750,000 in 1948? So, we have precedence for this. We don't have these kind of. Okay, but fine, you can say a million people were. Uh, yeah, fine. Okay. This isn't a behavior that happens when you're starved, when you're. Uh, um, when, when you're oppressed, when you're starved, when you've got no food, when, when that is not just don't a... have, people don't have these kind of uh, babies that grow. Maybe maybe some have because there's no birth control, but they die in infancy. But you don't have people growing up. You don't have people being babies being born and growing up when you starve. It's just never happened in the history of the world. It's not. It's they're put on. A, they're put on a diet, and they are poor, and they have been starved. Yes, that that is that is true. I think Yemen yeah, that... is starved. You can say yes, the Yemenis are dying of starvation. Yeah, Yemenis are actually Right starved. now, babies are dying of starvation. But in Gaza, the population doubled in 18 years. Okay, and let's attribute this to purely birth rates and not movement and people being pushed in. What is the point? I think my point is that no genocide, certainly no starvation. Yes, there is genocide. There is genocide. Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere. But I, do okay. want, I, well, I want you to say the last word. I know I spoke to okay. you more, and I've interrupted you. Here, here is. I'm from the Middle East. <laughs> you have to guess. Yeah, I man. cannot tell you. What? You, you have to guess. Know, I'm just an Arab. You say Palestinian? No, no, I'm just an Arab. Guess. Haifa. It's, no, no, it's. You'll never guess. No, 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 not here. No. What? No. Okay. Not the. Not. Not a Palestine. Then Morocco. No, you said I'm gonna have the last word. Syrian, maybe. No. Okay. No. Here's here's my last word. Here, no, no. I'll tell you later. Here's my last word. There have been. It's been. Uh, I don't know what what. I don't know. Can I say bad words? It's running. It's like it's been a cluster f. What uh, what's been happening? I believe the cause is these people who started in 1948. They have been continuously pressing them. If we want to move forward, the only way we can do this is one state solution, not a two state solution. One state. Democratic and votes and all that. Th I think that's that's my last word. And I am better than you. You cannot respond because that's the last word. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. Thank you, sir. Actually, yeah, sir. Thank you. Nice talking to intelligent conversation. With a degree of disagree. Notice you said intelligent conversation. You didn't describe me as intelligent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. No, of course I'm, I'm right. joking. Yes, yes. Okay, where is the... The, the, abili the ability to... That guy! A, I know that guy. The ability to have a conversation without just walking... Is there any murder? Murderers! Murder. Yeah. Yes. No, in fact, that shows a large degree of intelligence. And okay. It's refreshing. Most of the time, it's just shouting and screaming. And just... Yeah, so uh, you... Change mind, but it's just a nice conversation. I have a question, I have a question. Sure. Uh, uh, Jewishness or Judaism? It's a religion and an ethnicity. Please, yes. And how is it counted if it's an ethnicity? Like, how do you know that someone is Jewish from an ethnicity point of view? Um, it's, it's, it's quite complex. Um, is it like people within the Israeli, the Jewish community know that this person is Jewish? Well, Judaism, Judaism, you can be a Jew in two ways. Either being born to a Jewish mother or by converting to Judaism. Mm. Now, this is according to Jewish law. The, now, this is according to Jewish law. Uh, Torah. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah. Torah law. What, what the Torah, what Jewish law considers Jews, is either you're born to a Jewish mother, or you convert to Judaism. Up till about 200 years ago, it was all one and the same. 
because all Jews were religious. There were religious Jews who didn't keep everything, but they saw themselves as, as religious because the idea of secularism hadn't been invented yet. Mm -hmm. It was after the French Revolution that they had the idea of secularism in general. They see by the Christians as well, the, they had the Reformation, the, the Catholics became Protestants. You know, all this kind of, of liberalism, secularism is really... Non-religiousism. Yeah, and it's two, three hundred years, I can't tell you the exact date, but it's, it's only a few hundred years old. And eventually it came to the Jews as well. So Jews started seeing themselves, I'm a Jew, but I don't keep... I'm a Jew, but I don't believe. Yeah. And what that meant is he was born to a Jewish mother, so Jewish law saw him. Now there's inherent tension, but why they call yourself Jewish? So I'm Jewish by Jewish law, but I don't actually recognize that law, kind of. So yeah. The, now Israel, for example, you're talking like um, nowadays, the State of Israel accepted the Jew, even though it's a secular country, it's completely secular, but they accepted the Jewish law definition of what is a Jew. Is it both conversion yes. or in, in, in the law, in the Jewish, in the, in the Israeli law, this is the actual definition: either born to a Jewish mother, or you've converted to Judaism with an Orthodox conversion. So, so if I marry a Jewish woman. And my sons are again, going to be Jewish. and the Muslim at the same, like ethnically Jewish and religiously Muslim. Well, religion depends how you raise. Yeah, but like if they're Muslim, then they're going to be Jewish and Muslim. Yes, they're, they're going to fight with each other forever. Well, with, with themselves, actually. Yeah, I mean, I would see them as Jews, full fledged Jews, okay. just not practicing Judaism. Okay. There are many Jews nowadays that don't practice Judaism, many secular Jews. Mm -hmm. Most of Israel is Jews that don't practice Judaism. It's a, it's a secular country. Okay. But the law, who is a Jew in Israel, was based on the. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was based on the on the Jewish. Thank you. The Jewish law. Yeah. Well, you had the first yeah, words. Isaiah. 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 Isai